There's two areas of challenges with source-separated organics. One area is actually getting the organics collected and being able to get a, a high capture rate from residents. You know, the material is pretty, it's dirty stuff, there's a lot of contamination in it, and trying to get residents to participate and deliver as much as they can is, is a challenge that the city faces. And for the most part, they've, they've overcome that challenge by allowing residents to dispose of material in plastic bags, and which allows them to get rid of the, uh, the, the yuck factor that's associated with the waste, and also allows them to have a fairly wide contamination rate in terms of the materials that they throw out. Challenge at the other end is being able to separate that material, and we call it digestible material and non-digestible material. And so the key is to be able to separate that material into the two fractions, and that's really where, where we come into play with our front end cleaning systems, a hydropulping system, which allows us to pull out the non-digestibles and get a clean material that can then be fed to the digester for producing power. You know, when you put in processing systems that are going to do something else with it, either produce energy, produce a compost, produce recyclables, the cost to do that is more expensive than the infrastructure of picking it up, taking it in a truck, and putting it in a landfill. The standard offer program that works today, or the feed-in tariff program, provides a much higher revenue value for the, for the energy that you produce. And so that certainly has an impact back on paying back the investment for putting in the facilities. So on an operating basis, these facilities generally cost about $50 a ton. Let's just use that as a, as a benchmark. Some are higher, some are less. But you have $50 a ton. At the same token, then you have the capital repayment on it, and that can easily be another $50, $60, $70 a ton. You know, over $100 a ton. When you put the two components together, to deal with materials, especially in an urban setting, it costs more than $100 a ton. You have to offset that against what it costs them to send it to landfill, is it costs them all in $55. You know, we are in the anaerobic digestion business. You know, Ten years ago, to say the words anaerobic digestion, nobody had talked to you. It was just not something that was, people thought was a feasible way to do it, and people wouldn't give you the time. Whereas today, anaerobic digestion is a very hot topic. Uh, it, you know, it's proven, it's installed in Europe, and it's interesting, if you look at the, you know, the road from the beginning of recycling through to at the end where you're actually processing these materials and pulling off valuable pieces, Europe has been doing this far in advance of we've been doing it. They've been forced to because they have higher populations, they've got smaller, smaller uh, geographic areas, and so they just can't pop landfills up here and there and deal with it that way. And so it, when I look at it, it's almost looking at hindsight. You look at what they're doing and the road they're going down, and while we're going, we're going down exactly the same road, the difference is we're going down the road faster. We're taking a look over there, we're seeing what they're doing, the decisions that they've made, the problems that they've had, and so we're, being, we're able to streamline the process a little bit. But at the end of the day, we do follow exactly the same road. Between Randy and Kevin, we now realize that Anaerobic digestion takes place in a closed, contained environment without oxygen. Aerobic digestion is composted materials that take place with oxygen. Uh, George Scott uh, has got a brand new facility in Kingston, Ontario, where they're launching their green bin program, and he's going to just give us the rundown on how his system works, uh, and from a cost structure for smaller municipalities, is a really neat way to go to launch a green bin program. Norterra Organics is the latest in um, organic composting in eastern Ontario. So give us a little rundown on, on your system here and, and sort of the process that you went through that led you to choosing this system. We first started to look into uh, the organic processing uh, aspects of, of waste and tried to choose the proper technology that would, that would uh, manage the organic stream with, uh, with, uh, uh, with a very cost-effective, uh, efficient manner. And we looked at a number of technologies. I sort of flew around the world and looked at gasification, looked at plasma arc conversion, uh, looked at uh, incineration, uh, looked at uh, this system, which is known as the Gore system. And after my uh, after my uh, educational uh, sort of foray around the world, 
We developed a strategy, uh, an integrated waste strategy, where we can use uh, certain technologies. Um, in particular, this technology is uh, the Gore technology out of Germany, and everything else is proprietary on this facility, but the Gore cover itself, the way in which that we treat organic waste through the, the process of anaerobic decomposition is utilized through the Gore system. So what is your, what is, for the process to, to function from start to finish, uh, what are we looking at in terms of, let's just say, uh, you've got your, your green bin waste, your table yep. scraps. Yep. Uh, what are we looking at from start to finish before it ends up, let's say, in your closed loop on the sod farm? It ends up, uh, the program is about six weeks, uh, six to eight weeks. Uh, the longer you mature the compost, the higher quality you have. So once it finishes a system, then it'll go and it'll, it'll cure. And depending on the quality of compost that we require, uh, we'll, we'll, that, that is determined by the time it's spent curing. So. Uh, <clears throat> this is a very unique system. Uh, as you can see by the bunkers that you have, that we have here, this, um, there were some very key concerns. When I went, when, when I went to look for technology, there's there some very key concerns that I was interested in when managing organic waste. The first is odor. We manage odor uh, very similarly to other uh, organic processing facilities in Ontario where we have the tipping building under negative vacuum. But when the material leaves, it goes under the gore cover. And the gore cover is a laminate membrane. So in other words, it's three layers of laminate which allow um, simple molecules to go through or to migrate through the cover and it does not allow complex chemicals or the smells, the H2S, the, 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 the chemicals that create odor. the compounds that create odor, it doesn't allow it to leave, leave the cover. So do, are you saying then that these concrete bunkers here will have this three membrane cover over the entire, over its entire? Exactly, they'll be about five meters high, eight meters wide, 50 meters long, completely covered, completely sealed. And another area you really have to worry about when you're building any facility uh, under section 27, uh, part five of the EPA is encroachment. What happens in five years? First of all, you can't devalue anybody's property around you. And second of all, what happens in five or 10 or 15 years if this land becomes very valuable? What happens if people, you know, if, if, a, if a community wants to move in, the, move in or get constructed down the street where you have 45 or 50 homes? Now, we mitigate all of the risk with odor control, but you want to make sure that if you get in a position where the actual land itself is more valuable than the process, you can take the process somewhere else. You can take it 10 more miles out of town. This whole system is completely portable from the scale house to the tipping building to the bunkers to the bunker walls. Everything can be picked up in a week and moved. Wow. Yeah. That's, that's pretty thorough planning, George. We have spent two years and working with uh, uh, our regulators from the Ministry of the Environment, working with councillors from the City of Kingston, working with the Planning Department and the other staff members in the City of Kingston. We've worked with neighbours to build the best system that we can come up with. As we head towards zero waste, anaerobic digestion and aerobic digestion will both have their places in serving municipalities across Canada and around the world. There are many companies that are publicly traded right now that specialize in these two types of digestion. Bag is full. We throw it into the nearest landfill. It's out of sight and out of mind. What is the state of our humankind? And I don't know what to say. Cause we produce my heart every day. And we call it garbage. We got plastic, thanks for this. We got 